series and we'll start on Saturday night down at the Halliwell Jones. It was Warrington Wolves 27, Brisbane Broncos 18 mark. The Wolves achieved the first win for an English club over Australian opponents since 2012 as they beat the Broncos in the first match of this year's series. Kevin Brown was excellent on his debut for Warrington, scoring a try as early as the second minute. Uh, Ryan Atkins and Matty Russell helped out the hosts into a 20-0 lead and Tom Lynham also crossed for the wire before half-time. Deck Patton added 11 points with the boot while Corey Oates, James Roberts and David Mead all replied for Brisbane and it was a heck of a performance from the Warrington Wolves, Mark. Yeah, and we'll start with Tyler Cass fan who says, Blistering first half laid the platform for this brilliant win. Brisbane seemed complacent but com- came harder in the second half. Great individual performances from Cooper, Brown and Gidley lifted the whole team to another level. BP Loftus got in touch and he said that he thoroughly enjoyed the game, didn't think Warrington would win, but after their great start they continued to play pretty well and really deserved the victory. Great team performance and Mike Cooper showed why he's been selected for England, a much improved player and his man of the match. James Roberts, proving he's a twat yet again, forgets that blokes punch back. It's their year, I can hear them all now. Oh yeah, there was the uh, there was a bit of tastiness that came in a couple of times, and yeah. um, Ben Bentham didn't. Uh, I, d- I think he just thought they'd get. It was Bentham, wasn't it? Referee? No, it was Child. Was, was it Child? Was it Bentham? I, um, don't, I don't recall. You don't have it written down. I'll tell you. I haven't got it written down. You're fucking, I don't know why I keep you around to be honest. This is hard work, this Tom Bentham. Let's just say Bentham and then everyone can tell us we're wrong. Bentham was video ref though on Saturday, wasn't he? On Sunday. Sunday. On Sunday. Yes, it was Bentham. It was, it was Bentham. And he sort of trusted the players to like not have another scuffle, thinking it's only a friendly, really, sort of thing. And um, yeah, the players can't be trusted. Couldn't be bothered with that sort of business. And <laughs> fuck, fuck that noise, Phil. <laughs> yeah, and really, really got after each other repeatedly. But it showed that the intensity was there. Certainly, mm. um, definitely. Chris Macy. Then what did he have to say? Chris Macy said, "What an absolute belter of a game! Why did Super League proud tonight? How often will you frustrate?" and for so many errors from a side like Brisbane. I know you could say it's their pre-season and they'll be undercooked, etc. But fuck that. Why I fully deserve that win. Every man on the pitch outdid themselves. 100% completion rate first half is phenomenal. And what a debut for Kevin Brown. Superb stuff. Well, it, was, it was 97% after the... 97% completion yeah. after the full time. So like that completion rate, along with a better penalty count than the put up the week before the exact reverse of what they did and where it went wrong for them in Catalan the week before so oh. you can't credit that level of turnaround of, in the performance yeah of proficiency at that level of intensity yeah, from I Warrington agree. Tim G Radio said brilliant speed all over the park by Wire pattern fabulous and showed a lot of intelligence to pick off the drop goal when the Broncos were showing signs of clawing their way back into it Alan Walker said great atmosphere from a small crowd HJ should have been full for a real match. I'm sure Super Coach Bennett supports the concept as long as he's England RL coach. At least Wire gave the Broncos a good warm up for the NRL. Good to see the Biff back in the game. Broncos didn't lose at that though. Brown played well. Glad that Wire didn't come to Brutus. There you go. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I bet he is. <laughs> yeah. Ollie Smith said, Wow, what a game. Massive effort from the Wire. Thought Cooper in particular was outstanding. Credit to the officials as well. Handled the game really well. Looking forward to next week versus Castleford now. Colin Render said, Congrats to Wire. Oh, sorry, I missed one. I've missed one. No, yeah. No, Colin Render said, Congrats to Wire. Off to, got off to a great start and never let up after that. Brisbane made a game of it by fighting till the end, but it was always going to be difficult after that opening period from Wire. Tom Eckley 99 said, I'm honestly struggling to think of a better 1 to 17 Warrington performance. It can only be attributed to one factor the Blythe effect. But seriously, what a game. Frogmore said, where have this Wolves side been? Made Brisbane not look like Brisbane. Had them rattled, bamboozled, flabbergasted even. The future immortal and his merry men brought razzle and the dazzle. (laughs) That couldn't even be derailed by the Broncos trying to scrap. On that, did Roberts take Thaday's job of running in and dog shot? Yeah. 
if as a as a lifelong Broncos hater, I can't be any any happier at the result. I've got to say, Hashtag it's, hate hate hate. I hadn't read this tweet before tonight, but as I was watching the game live, when that happened, when he got it around the back of the head, I immediately went, "Fucking hell, Sam Thiday!" And then it just transpired not to be him. So I automatically, I just assumed it was Sam Thiday. There you go. I owe him a small apology. Andy Barden, the Brit renegade, but to us, he is none other than the electric gigolo. True Super League pod royalty, amongst others. Uh, he said, they can only play what's in front of them. Brown had a good game. Felt like the Broncos did not really leave the changing rooms. Uh, Johnny A, at that underscore river. He said, enjoyed that. Well done, Wire. Now prepare yourselves for the it doesn't matter, it's only a trial game from the Aussies. There you go. Lee Whitnell says, now I don't want to get carried away, but clearly this result means it's definitely our year and Kevin Brown will be Man of Steel and be the man who stops <coughs> President Trump. Absolutely buzzing after that result. We definitely appeared to catch Brisbane on an off day, but all our players look hungry, sharp and wanted it more. Gidley was immense in his natural role at fullback, getting... I'm not sure it was so much a, a Brisbane off day. No, I don't think it was I an off think, day. I think that's a disservice to Warrington. I think Warrington started the game at such an intensity level. Yeah. I was saying to you, wasn't I, on the way down to Wigan yesterday, um, that I'd seen an interview with Sean O'Loughlin in the week, sort of about what I'd learned from the last few years of losing in World Club Challenge and World Club Series games. And he said... Like, it doesn't always think we've expected the intensity to be what it was for, from the off with sides who, you know, had just come off the back of the preseason and, and, and such like, yeah. and had flown over the, the other side of the world and what have you. Um, and it was almost like the absolute flip reversal of that, that Brisbane didn't accept this level of intensity that Warrington brought. Mm. So I, I'd say stop talking talking Brisbane down and talk Warrington up. Yeah, no, I agree I agree with you. Um, your turn, Paul Ludo Lewis. Paul Ludo Lewis said, fair play to Wire, they deserve that. Came out of the blocks fast and the Broncos never recovered. Watching King Cobra Brown <laughs> guide them around the pitch, though, was a kick in the balls. It's like when you break up with someone, tell yourself that they were a pain in the arse, but you'll be better off, and you're better off single. Then you see them tapping off with a bloke with a man bun, tie sleeves and a six pack and you're crushed. Can't say. This... Whilst I, whilst I get your sentiment, Paul, has some very specific details in it that lead me to believe that we might be talking about something else here as much as, as, much as Kevin Brown. Uh, Why Joe got in touch, he said, a brilliant performance from us. Every negative from last week's game was addressed and fixed. Completion rate was outstanding and the handling errors and penalties cut out. Some big performances from our forwards, particularly Cooper. These are ex- exactly the tight, high-intensity games that we failed to game manage at the back end of last season. So hopefully this has given us a taste now of how to close these games out. Yeah, they certainly did play it like it was a final. Uh, final one comes from Alfie Garner at Alfie Wolf on Twitter. He says, fantastic, an RL <coughs> standard, clinical. There you go. Absolutely, they certainly were. And... With with I can only agree with everything that the the, the, fa- the good fans of Super League Pod have, have had to say, Mark. It was high levels of completion, and they were competing and out enthusing the Brisbane side across the park for vast swathes of this game. And that's what you've got to do if you're going to beat an Australian team. And, and credit to them. And the forward pack were great, particularly the starting forward pack. Yeah. Um, certainly, and Ben Westwood off the bench. Yeah. And I thought rolled back the years in his in his first. T- um, 10 minutes or so on the field what I would um, what, Jack Hughes and Joe Westerman phenomenally good I'm surprised no one singled out Joe Westerman in the fan reviews mm. um, because I thought he, he started the season yeah. in absolutely brilliant form and just continued it in this game and then as well as all the completion rate stuff and all of the physicality and the full pack playing well it wasn't as if there was no attempts at flair kind of stuff from the Warriors it just all came off and then on top of that they got every bounce of the ball every 50-50 they carried that intensity through to get everything going for them in this game yeah. and deserved the win thoroughly because of that um, and you know you think of things like Gidley's pass for the Matty Russell try which was great work by Matty Russell too to get in and finish yeah, it off it's a brilliant finish um, even though like the Broncos Corey Oates try was a, a, a Great try, mm. well worked and stuff as well. So there's the, the Brisbane when they did do stuff, did do stuff, some good stuff. But 
They just weren't allowed to get out of the traps quickly enough, and that first 30 minutes destroyed them. Now, the other, thing I, the other thing I want to say is that we've bigged up this Warrington pack and talked about how good you know Cooper was and, and, and the influence of, of guys like Westerman and um, Jack Hughes as well. The thing that we haven't focused on whilst we've been talking about this phenomenal Warrington performance is that they did this without Chris Hill. There were 65 minutes where they didn't have one of the world's five best props playing for them. And they still achieved that. That's remarkable because he's such an important player to them. And the team still stepped up and produced this level of performance. So I credit Warrington massively with a a victory. And I I don't like the the idea that... that I never like the the conversation about teams being undercooked. Warrington won this game legitimately and very, very well for my money. Yeah, I do think that Brisbane forward pack particularly the props did not play very well oh, however that that there's a large part of that is what Warrington allowed them to do yeah yeah absolutely so statistics mark what have we got well I've just picked out some players really from both sides for the two World Club Series games we'll start with the winners Warrington Matty Russell grabbed himself a try 175 metres two clean breaks Mike Cooper with 130 metres Kirk Gidley with 112 metres Ashton Sims, 103 metres. Joe Westerman, 46, 46 tackles and 139 metres. Um, for the losing Broncos side, you know, to demonstrate that they had some strong performers and it wasn't for a lack of trying on their part, for sure. Uh, Andrew McCulloch, 48 tackles. Josh Maguire, 129 metres. James Robert, Roberts, a try on 114 metres. Corey Oates, a try and 119 metres. And David Mead, a try on 141 metres. There you go. So, congratulations to the Y and commiserations to the Broncos. Less than 24 hours later, though, we were all down at the DW for the showpiece event of the weekend. Mark, your Warriors were crowned World we the Club boys Champions the for the fourth time, appearing in their seventh, uh, and a record seventh uh, World Club Series game. It was 22 points to six in favour of a dominant Wigan Warriors. Joe Burgess scored a hat-trick of tries as the Warriors went on to beat the Sharks to win their fourth World Club Challenge Series game. Um, victory for the Warriors also completed a 2-0 series whitewash for Super League over the NRL. Over Gil- that also crossed as an English club became world champions for the first time since Leeds in 2012. Wigan's success was aided by a superb defensive effort with Krill's only score coming through Jesse Ramian midway through the second period. Plenty of people getting in touch about this one, as you might expect, Mark. Shall we start with Alan Walker? Yes, yeah, so it's great atmosphere, not bad attendance. Two scrappy teams gave the ref plenty of work. He should have blasted the pee out of the whistle a bit more. Williams, the best player by far. Hope Super Coach Bennett finally sees sense. Like Betty it. pairs with it with Hodg- Hodkinson. <laughs> This result should see the format continue. Well done, pay eaters. Tyler Casfan said, 2 not the Super League. Who'd have thought it? Sharks were disappointing, but that's not Wigan's concern, and they totally deserve their win. Why does the ref get scrutinised when penalty count is uneven? Surely it's down to team discipline. I couldn't agree more, young man. Um... Did you hear the chance of? Did you pick up on the chance of two 0 to the Super League that were running, ringing around near the end of the game? No, it wasn't in our stand, but I heard it on the, the footage back, right. which was quite fun. And plus, we were hammered, so we probably didn't. I haven't watched it back. Do you know what? I've not even watched it back to see myself on TV, Mark. No, not yet. No, I haven't had an ego watch. Emma, Emma was Emma was loving it when she was watching it back with me. Poor Emma. I watched it back twice. Once drunk still, and once <laughs> sober, but sort of distracted by putting the show together this after this morning. Um, but. The penalty count thing. Mm. Watching the game live, it didn't feel like it was. What was it? Twelve six in the end. The penalty count against right. Cronulla. Right. It didn't feel like when we were at the game that there was that big no, a, bigger it. difference because I remember some of the Wigan penalties that were given against us and thinking Being a bit make-up-y. that's not a penalty. The yeah. one John Bateman on. I think it was Chris Hangington where Hangington took a ride over the top of him and at the last minute Bateman sort of shoved him or grabbed him but it was already a penalty at that point there was one that Lachlan gave for holding down where it was equally as long as many instances both from both times throughout the game there was there was things that stuck out like that that made me sort of think it wasn't as big as it a mm. difference as it was but I suppose there was a couple of scrum differential penalties there was Wade Graham was like I don't know we had a couple of screws loose for parts of this game, you know, when he when he smacked Sam Powell in the face and turned over possession that way, uh, had a go in a scrum, a couple of things, a couple of yeah. just daft bits of play. He's he a, even got a penalty a when he ran in and took out James Maloney when the <laughs> club gave him a bit of a shove, so it probably would have been a penalty anyway. But Wade Gray made sure the job was finished off and Maloney fouled the deck. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> there you go. But now I, I, I agree. I agree with you, Tyler. And in fact, the fact that it was Robert Hicks who is being scrutinised for this, I applaud even more because he's one of the ones I would single out as being a, a ref who likes to make makeup calls. So credit to Hicks for refereeing it straight and 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 letting the chips fall where they may in terms of penalties. I don't agree at all with this idea that penalty counts should be even. There's absolutely nothing that tells you that that's how the game should fall. It all comes down to team discipline. Shoddy and Mungo said congratulations to Wigan and all that.